All right, this is the mid-November update. I'm not doing a November update or a December update because there's just too much going on at this time of year, but we definitely needed to get in front of you and get you an update on what's happening in the real estate and mortgage market right now so that you can make your decisions and get prepared for 2025. So let's start here. Effective November 21st, we can switch lenders. If you have a conventional loan, that means a loan that's amortized over 30 years that has 20% equity, you can switch lenders and only qualify at your contract rate. That means the stress test is no more. If your mortgage is coming up for renewal and it has, say, a 30-year amortization, you've got 20% equity in your property, there was no mortgage default insurance piece to your original loan, we can switch lenders without you having to be qualified at the stress test. So this is a big deal because in many cases, you might be qualifying more at, qualifying more at about 4.5% versus 6.5%, okay? So big, big change. Take a look at this chart, mortgage renewals by year. You can can see that there are a huge number of mortgages coming up for renewal in 2025, 2026, 2027. It is so important that the government has put into place this new regulation that you don't have to qualify at the stress test if you want to switch lenders on renewal. We've got different banks that are being more aggressive with rates than they were previously. As an example, we have TD Bank that has really moved out of the rate market this year, where we have Scotiabank that stepped back into the rate market this year. So if you have a deal at TD Bank right now, you might not want to renew it there. And it's really great that you now don't have to qualify at the stress test rate to move that mortgage to another lender. Now, I want to be really clear. You still have to qualify to move to another lender. You just don't have to qualify at 2% higher than what you're actually going to contract your mortgage rate at, okay? So big changes, tons of opportunity in that renewal market, that refinance market right now for clients to be able to move their mortgages somewhere else, get a better rate, get a better product, extract some equity, lots of opportunity there. Feel free to reach out to us if you have questions about your specific deal. Other things that are coming down the pipe, December 15th, we are going to see the increase in the cap for a default insured mortgage. So that means if you want to buy a house up to $1.5 million, you only need a minimum down payment, okay? Um, it used to be capped at a million dollars, now it's gonna be capped at $1.5 million. Super important for somebody listing a house that's worth kind of between a million and a million one, right? Previously, if you listed your house at a million 50, you lost a big group of buyers that couldn't come up with that 20% down. Now you can more strategically list your house, you know, up to like 1.099 and you can still get an insured buyer pool that's able to come and look at your property, potentially make you an offer. Okay. So I really think it's a great opportunity for people listing their homes in and around that million dollar mark to potentially squeeze out a little more value on their sale price. The next thing to think about too, is that effective December 15th, first time home buyers with less than 20% down can purchase with 30 year amortization. That's a huge injection of affordability into the market. I know we have seen from a boots on the ground perspective, a huge Q4. It's been the busiest fourth quarter I've ever experienced in my mortgage career. And what we found that was a result of was clients that wanted to get into the property market 18 months ago, and they were just overwhelmed with competing offers, you know, overwhelmed with rates at five and a half. And so when we saw rates come back down into that 4% level, we've seen a little bit of an injection of excitement into the market. I think that December 15th increase in affordability because these first time home buyers can qualify with 30 year amortization is again going to spur a lot of demand and excitement in that Q1 market. So do I think we're going to be lined up with 26 competing offers in Calgary like we were, you know, 18 months ago? Absolutely not. But do I think buyers are going to continue to buy homes that are properly priced in our markets in Alberta? Absolutely. I think that's going to happen. Um, and especially, you know, with, you know, your average you know, $100,000, uh, you know, income earner, you know, we're seeing an injection of between thirty dollars to $50,000 of affordability with that increase in amortization. So huge change for these borrowers and definitely, definitely something you want to make sure that you're discussing with your clients, you know, if you are a realtor and that you're discussing with your mortgage broker, if you are out shopping for a property, okay? So let's talk a little bit about what's going on with rates. We've got a real divergence in camps with analysts right now. So we're going to show what the market is indicating rates are going to do. This is a lot higher than what we showed a month ago. 
a month ago, the market saw fixed rates bottoming around 4%. Now the market is showing fixed rates bottoming around 4.5%, okay? So significantly higher. That being said, um, there are some analyst predictions that variable rates are going to get quite a bit lower. So let's talk about both camps, okay? First of all, let's look at this chart. We've got a chart that shows the downward trending five-year government of Canada bond yield. You can see there's still some room to the upside for us to be part of that downward trending chart, but still have a little bit of pain before the market flips and goes the other way again and rates start coming back down. So something that we've seen in the last week is that we've seen rates bounce from about 4% up to 4.5% at a lot of our major lenders, just because the government of Canada bond yields have taken off on the back of the 10 year treasury yield in the States. Well, what happened in the States? Trump was elected, right? Um, the economy really is likely to spin under Trump more so than they thought it was going to spin under a democratic government, okay? So we are expecting that we are going to see continued volatility in the 10 year treasury yield, which unfortunately really affects what's going to happen in Canada. But that's really near term volatility, okay? Overall, what we have to look at when we're looking at the Canadian economic situation situation is what is happening on our side of the border. And what's happening on our side of the border is that we are seeing some weakness. Check out this graph that's showing us household interest payments as their share of disposable incomes. This is terrifying. We're seeing this on a more minute scale in our business. We're seeing an increasing number of clients come to us looking to refinance, restructure, and stretch their debt payments out over 30 years. It's because they want to manage their monthly cash flow. It's because they're finding that life is more expensive. Groceries are more expensive. Fuel is more expensive. And so their credit balances have climbed in the last couple of years. As their mortgages are coming up for renewal, they are wanting to refinance and pay out that high interest debt and bring their monthly payments down. So we are definitely seeing this in our mortgage business. I think this Canadian tire chart is really important as well. Thanks so much to Ben Rabideau, one of my favorite analysts for providing this. I think it really shows what's going on in our economy. We're seeing a real year-over-year -year decrease in goods being purchased at Canadian Tire. When you see businesses making less income, selling less goods, that means they're ultimately going to have to lay off staff and cut costs, right? This is bad for the Canadian economy. Beyond what's going on on an economic level, we have to look at what's going on at a political level. We've had a major change in immigration policy that is coming down the pipe. Check out the graph below, it shows non-permanent residents as a total percentage of the Canadian population. When we look at the projected immigration policy, we can see that the net non-permanent residence is going to drop drastically. So what does that do to our population in Canada? Look at this annual population growth chart. You can see that in 2025 and 2026, we're likely to see negative population growth in Canada. This is problematic when we're really in an economy that's already starting to contract. When we have less people coming, we have less people to rent properties. It means our rents might decrease a little bit. We're likely to see property prices settle down a little bit as well. When we look to overlay what one of my favorite analysts, Ben Rabideau, is saying about where he thinks the expected policy rate is going to go versus where the market is predicting it's going to go, there is a bit of a divergence. I'm not actually sure where I stand on this right now, but I think it is important to know that there's really two different camps and taking a variable rate mortgage means that you're taking a stand in one of those camps or the other. You can see that his estimates are that our policy rate will have to get a lot lower than where the policy rate is currently set to settle out. Overall, 2024, is going to continue to be a difficult mortgage market to navigate. It's very important that you're staying in touch with both your realtor if you're planning on listing or buying, as well as your mortgage broker so that you have a firm mortgage plan in place as you move forward and make the decisions about what you want to do with your mortgage financing in the coming year. And now that I've talked about everything serious, I want to make sure that I'm personally inviting you to our Spire sponsored movie event at the Globe Cinema on December 1st at 4.30 p.m. where we are screening the Polar Express. We're buying the pop and the popcorn. Bring your family and your friends and come celebrate a really great year with Spire.